voices in my head, they counsel me, they understand, they talk to me. Fight for Fire 67 here with uh, some more of the Attitude Era. This is episode 30. This is going to be WWF In Your House Backlash. Um, this was in the Providence. Where was this again? It was in the Providence. It's the Providence Civic Center in Providence, Rhode Island, and a crowd of just on over 10, nearly 11,000 people. Um, this pay per view again wasn't particularly great, but it was better than WrestleMania by a country mile. Um, but yeah, at the same time, it was still pretty mediocre from being completely and utterly honest. Um, I'm not going to go into in depth of what happened leading up, obviously, cause, but I will talk about some key, small key points towards the show. Obviously, obviously, The Rock throwing Austin off the bridge into the river along with the supposedly with the smoke and skull title. He comes back, I think, the week later and has the belt uh, on his waist. Uh, he has a funeral for the Rock or for Austin, and then Austin uh, destroys Rock's Lin Lincoln Continental with a monster truck. Um, small other things that uh, Shane McMahon took over the corporation from Mister McMahon, obviously because he's been looking after Stephanie with the things that's going on with the Undertaker. Obviously Shane obviously tried to retire the European title, but I think X Pac won it back. Um, also Undertaker sacrificed Ken Ken Shamrock's sister Ryan, which obviously led up to that as well. So. So yeah, so there were some of the key points. There was other more little key points, but I just wanted to go through kind of the four main ones that kind of stuck into my head. But um, yeah, we'll get on with the show because it's not really that great, but it's probably the best show of the year so far. I might, I might have to look through the rest, but I think this one is the fourth pay-per-view of 99, and it's probably the best one, probably, maybe by about that much. But, but hey, we'll get on with it, shall we, will we? First match, the Ministry of Darkness, which is Bradshaw, Farouk, the Acolytes, obviously, and Midian taking on The Brood. This was a wasn't a great open match. I'm going to give it a star because I'm generous, but it just wasn't good. The crowd weren't really fucking into the match at all. Uh, Midian chokes Christian in the corner. Spinning heel kick from Christian and then a big move from Bradshaw. Reverse elbow from the second rope from Gangrel. Uh, Bulldog from Edge and then a spine buster from Farouk. First look at the suplex gets two for Midian. The match is very boring, I must say. Um, the crowd are dead. Like Obviously, the brood have gone away from um, the Ministry of Darkness because of obviously Christian gave... Uh, Stephanie's location obviously with Ken Shamrock giving them the ankle lock and obviously Undertaker was looking to punish Christian and Gangrel and Edge were not taking it so they basically tried to attack the ministry so they've been obviously been ousted from there so this is how this feud came about but uh, Spear by Edge on medium reverse DT gets 2 for Christian Tornado DT gets 2 on Bradshaw Powerbomb from Bradshaw gets 2 Vishra comes out a splash on Christian and a close line from Hell gets the win so yeah wasn't a great match to be completely honest like I don't the brood are okay us like the three guys Bradshaw for Midian are just, they don't really interest me at all so safely we get out of that one the better but uh, the next match then is for the WWF Hardcore title uh, Al Snow defeating uh, Hardcore Holly in it. again another poor match really I give it a star it's not like what they had at uh, St. Valentine's Day Massacre that match was pretty decent I must say this one was it was just boring really like I do like hardcore matches but like it could have been a lot better in my opinion these two are like hardcore Ali is not the greatest wrestler in the world but Al Snow has is a decent wrestler like Al Snow was ridiculously over in 98 going into 99 so but uh, Holly hits Snow with the hardcore title to start off with Holly then rams Snow into the steps and then he hits him with them with a jug of water or a car in a war or whatever they fight into the crowd Snow is busted up I think I don't know how that happened uh, Moonsault for from Snow while he was in the barrier, that was quite nice. What he done from the barrier that got two. Snow hits Holly with a hockey stick, which the crowd like. Snow hits Holly then with a cookie tray, and then Snow with a snook, uh, Holly with a suplex on Snow on the floor on the outside. Um, Holly then rams Snow into a car. They're out now, out basically backstage out towards the parking lot. Uh, Holly pushes Snow into a dump, pushes him into a dumpster. That gets two, I think. Holly hits Snow then with a frying pan table set up. Holly with a superplex from the top. That, they get two off that. Don't get this now. The referee is counting them out. And actually, Jim Ross actually did it as well. Why is the ref counting out? And this is a no count out match, basically. So the referee, and which was Mike Chioda now. Like, or maybe just, I don't know. What a fucking idiot. Like, what a fucking idiot. Snow gets head, hits Holly with that for the win. It was a bad match, to be honest. 
wasn't great. Just it could have been so much better in my opinion. As I said, like hardcore matches are one of my favorites because it's not. I do like res like proper like wrestling, but I do prefer hardcore because it's an alternative. But like this match was absolute piss poor. So I'll just give it a star because it in some parts it was deep. Like I did like some of the weapon shots, but other than that, that's all I can compare to give it. So. Next match then, uh, the Godfather defeats Goldust in a shit match to retain the Intercontinental title. Now, uh, Goldust won the title two weeks, pre uh, the, Go the Godfather won it two weeks previous on Raw, which I don't get why the Godfather is going to become the Intercontinental Champion in the first place. Um, literally nearly everyone had a fucking title shot at that year. But um, for the match, the Ministry, actually before this match even started, the Ministry are talking about, he talked about the higher power, he said tonight there's going to be a tragedy and other little things he's pleased about the ministry winning their map, the six man tag and all that. So so we'll find out later tonight what that tragedy was. Won't we? Uh Meanie gets on the mic and basically mocks Sable, you know, doing the grinds. Oh, it was so funny. All the men who came to see me and all the women who wanna be with me. <laughs> so fucking I give him that it was a pretty funny promo. Um backdrop from the Godfather, the crowd chant we want hoes. Meanie chokes, uh, chokes the Godfather with the ref is distracted by Goldust. Goldust smacks power that Goldust has in his hand into his face. So he's blind and give, gives Meanie the shattered dreams. Whole train to both of them, the Death Valley driver gets the win. So, Shiny match. This match could have actually been a lot better. The Godfather is not the greatest worker in the world. Like, he is not the greatest of all time. But, like, Jesus, Goldust, like, pull like, even this match could have been maybe another star and a quarter or even a star and a half. But, it's just the attitude there at the time wasn't great in terms of pay per views. It was all about the Raws and the SmackDowns. So, yeah. Right, next match. Where are we? Oh, yes. The number one contender shot for the tag team titles tomorrow night on that next night on Raw. The New Age Out lost to be Owen Hart and Jeff Jarrett. And actually, a good match, actually, I must say. I really enjoyed it. Um, this is a match that I wasn't expecting to be that great, really, because obviously the New Age Out lost and have not been known for great matches, have they? But um, no, if they had a decent match, I'd give it two and a half stars, and I think. Probably some people I think yeah two and a half might be you know I, I enjoyed this match, uh, but before the match even started, uh, Road Dog wanted to see the puppies of Deborah. Deborah was going to do it, but Jared does not want her to do it. So the crowd boo, which is all good really. Uh, drop kick from Gun, neck breaker then from Owen Hart, and then a swinging neck breaker from Jared. The crowd chant showed the uh, puppies. <laughs> Obviously, Jay King was nearly having an orgasm when he was when he think he was going to see puppies. So shake rattle and he drop from the Road Dog. That gets two on Jarrett. And Zagure from Hart, that, that is being heel kick for two, gets hit for him as well. Double clothesline from Owen Hart and Jeff Jarrett, and then a drop kick from Jarrett, which was nice. Power Slam also gets two for Jarrett. Uh, Gun then gets a tie, cleans house with a nice drop kick on Jarrett. Uh, double ten punches in the corner from the Outlaws. Pun pump handle slam gets two for Gun then with a famous sir on Hart, that gets the win. So, yeah, decent match. Best night of the match. Best match of the night so far. It's probably the probably the second match best match of the night probably really good match like they really gel together really i think like i would like to see more i would like to see more of these kind of matches like i think owen hart and jeff Jarrett against the outlaws would be a decent rivalry but obviously as we know the next pay-per-view owen hart passes away obviously after that dreadful accident that happened at over the edge which is my next review i'm not looking forward to reviewing that because like i actually haven't seen that pay-per-view ever so this will be the first time ever watching it so Let's just say, um, I'm going to say this right now, the, I am going to wa watch and review Over the Edge, but I'm not going to rate any of the match. I'm not going to rate the pay-per-view as a score because obviously what happened to it. Because I think at the end of the day, I'll talk about more of that in the next video. But obviously with the guys, like I know they were in the back and all that, but like obviously with someone kind of getting tragically hurt at the time and then obviously passing away, you can't expect wrestlers to go out and ha put on a five-star performance. So, But hey, we'll talk about that later in the next one but yeah Shane talks to Michael Cole I basically says he has he'll give his word that he'll be a fair referee all that he swears on his grandfather uh, it was a James was a Vincent J McMahon uh, and Vince says he tells Vince to stay out of his way Vince then says it's so real my family is the most important thing to me not the wrestling so yeah next match actually Mankind defeats the big show and a good bra uh, I thought this was a decent boiler the room bra match I'm probably slightly overrating this person. I just thought it was fun. I think it was absolutely fun. I gave it two and a half stars. I thought it was good. I'm probably giving this probably a star and a half more than I should have, but still, I just like it. 
I like the match. I like the concept. I wish there was more of these matches. Like, you don't have them every week, but have them maybe once, maybe two, three times a year. Like, it's a shame you don't do them anymore. Cause Undertaker Mankind match was excellent, I thought. But then uh, Mankind uh, attacks show from behind with a brush. Mankind and Ram's head of show into a door. Show and hits Mankind with a table, like a wooden table thing you use for painting or something. Mankind comes back with hitting a uh, show with a sheet, little sheet rock off his head. That was cool. Big show, big boots, a trash can into Mankind's face. And smashes glass, Mankind smashes glass off Big Show, which bo busts both them open. So obviously his hand is busted up. Big Show chokes down his balance at Mankind up a ladder through two tables, but there was a load of glass as well, which was awesome. Mankind hits a pipe and then hot steam goes into the face of Show. Mankind with a pipe shot at the balls of the Big Show and then Mankind sh uh, rams Show into a load of pipes and then he leaves the boiler room for the win. So Test and Big Boss Man attack him after the match, but Mankind comes back with Sock going on Test and Show runs off to chase the big, big Boss Man. So yeah, good match. Much more better than I thought it ever actually would be. It was short and sweet. That's what I'm saying. Boiler Room Brawl matches are not 25 to 30 minutes long. Like, because obviously the whole concept is basically to leave the the boiler room. It's not a pinfall or a submission match. So the shorter it is, the better. Because like at the end of the day, no point in going for fifteen minutes or twenty minutes, and you're basically cr like basically nearly fucking dying to go out. So, but yeah, two and a half star match. I liked it. Like I have, I like these type of matches. So and they're rare. I think this is, to my knowledge, this is the last one. I think, or there could be another one in WWE. I don't know. But yeah, next match, Triple H defeats X-Pac in a disappointing match. I give it a start and a half. The reason why I'm saying disappointing is this match could have been hell of a lot better, in my opinion. Like, X-Pac is no fucking slouch. Triple H was doing good at the time. This I think this match could have been a hell of a lot better. But yeah, as we go. Heel kick from X-Pac. X-Pac then rams Triple H into the steps. Triple H launch, launches X-Pac over the top. Broke brief fucking... Literally just flings him over the top. Spinning heel kick gets two for X-Pac, and then X-Pac goes balls first into the turnbuckle. After going for the Bronco Buster. Close line from Triple H. Triple H then works the neck. Trying to with a right hand. And then swinging neck breaker gets two for Triple H. Knee to the back of the neck of, of X-Pac. Face Buster gets two Triple H, uh, from Triple H. Uh, JR keeps saying to the ref. Stop the damn match. Which is fun. Like JR is just absolutely brilliant. Close line from X-Pac. Tornado DDT as well. And then X-Pac goes low on Triple H by the referee. It's distracted by China. Ref gets bumped. Thanks to X-Pac doing a baseball slide. Triple H pushed him out in front of him. X Factor China goes low and X Pac Kane comes out, chokes down both Triple H and China. X Pac then with Bronco Buster on China and Triple H. But obviously, when he done it on China, Triple H was getting up, he turns around for the pedigree for the win. So, yeah, the match could have been much, much, much better, in my opinion. It wasn't bad, but it could have been so much more if you get where I'm coming from. I think it could have been. It could have been 10 times better, in my opinion. It could have been a two or three star match. But hey, at the end of the day, 1999 was a bad year for pay per views in both WWE and WCW. Like, WCW probably had maybe slighter pay per view, better pay per I don't know. Because I actually haven't watched WCW. I'm going to try my. I might start watching the 99 ones just to compare the both. So, we'll see. Next match then, The Undertaker defeats Ken Shamrock in an okay match again. I give this a star and a half. Uh, close line. This match also could have been a lot better in my opinion. Both men like Ken Shamrock, obviously former Ultimate Fighter. Undertaker's into all that Ultimate Fight and stuff because you always see him at MMA events. Like at the, at the time, like obviously, I think if this was taking place maybe we would say three or four years after, this could have been a hell of a lot better because obviously Taker is one of the best pure strikers in the, in the company and probably in wrestling full stop. Uh, well, obviously at the time, but um, close line from Taker. Taker them with old school. Taker them with flying clothesline gets two. Shamrock then works the knee of Taker and the suplex from Taker gets two. Shamrock then comes back with uh, a leg lock. Shamrock then still works the leg. Shamrock then with a Fujiwara armbar. Taker hangs Shamrock on the ropes and then Taker rams Shamrock back first into the into back first onto the the post I should say. Bow and arrow from Taker and then Taker with a half Austin crab. Big boot also from Taker. Shamrock then with an alka. Anka lock. Bradshaw comes out, uh, but Shamrock gets rid of him. Base Bay from Shamrock. Taker then go. I think Shamrock was going for something, but Taker reversed it into a tombstone for the win. So after the match, then Shamrock gets his ass kicked by Bradshaw with a baseball bat. As I said, this match could have been so much better, but hey, look. It's just the way 99 was. It was again, a disappointing show because on the card, they had some good potential to have a really good pay per view. But again, WWE blew it out of their ass, basically. So. What can you do? 
Right, on to the main event. Stone Cold Steve Austin defeats The Rock in a good match to retain the WWF World World uh, WWF title. Shane Man obviously is the special guest referee. Shane gets some guy to get smoke to skull title back to the back to the back. Lufaz press then from Austin swing neck breaker from the Rock. Rock then with a clothesline, then they fight on the outside. Rock then hits Austin with the fire extinguisher. Rock then rams Austin into the steel setting on the stage, and then Austin with a suplex on the floor, which was nice. Austin then gets his own back, rams Austin. Rock into the other part of the steel setting of the of the stage. It's quite fucking nice. Obviously, it was just fences, like like a hell in a cell type fence. But um, yeah, Austin cho- chokes Rock with a TV cable. Austin then rams Rock into a case that that holds equipment. Rock then chokes Austin, a slam on Austin on the floor. Austin then rams Rock back into the steps. Austin then stomps in mud hole, and Shane kind of gets into the face of Austin a little bit. Austin with a clothesline from the apron. Rock then Rock with a rock bottom to the Spanish and then his table. Austin and Rock then fight into the crowd. Rock takes a TV camera, starts talking smack and all that, and then when he turns around, Austin gets up. You can hear Rock going, "Oh shit!" Stunners him, and then that onto the announcers table. Fucking brilliant. Austin then hits Shane. He does not disqualify him. Shane hits Rock with the belt because Austin ducks. That gets two. Shane gives him the middle finger and runs out. Vince then hits Shane. Kind of passes Shane with a Earl Hebner. And then basically hits Shane with the belt. As Stunner and... Wait, no. Rock hits Austin with the belt for two. Stunner then from Austin. And then the belt, the skull, gets the win for Austin. Uh Good match, like it was probably just about the same as what they were at WrestleMania three and a half stars. Uh, it was a good match, like, but like I think it was too much in terms of you know fighting on the outside. I know fair enough. Back then it was like most of Austin and Rock's matches were no disqualification anyway, except for their final one at WrestleMania nineteen, which was actually just a pure wrestling match, which wasn't too bad if I'm being honest. But no, it was a good match, but like I think it could have been a little bit better in my opinion. But it was definitely a match of the night by fucking country mile, but um. After that, then Stephanie goes into her limousine, and um, the driver's the driver's uh, window thing comes up, and Taker goes, "Where to, Stephanie?" So she screams. She he drives off. Vince does not even know what happens because he's still at rings. Well, not rings. He's up by the stage area, and then you can hear K- King and Jr. saying, "Someone tell Vince. Someone tell Vince." So um, so yeah, so she's been kidnapped, and we'll f- find out obviously over the next couple of weeks, then what happens. So. So yeah, overall the pay-per-view was again a bit disappointing in my opinion. Like there was two or three matches that could have delivered a little bit more, and then the tag match was pretty good. The obviously the number one contenders match, uh, the boiler room brawl wasn't too bad, and obviously the main event was good. So, so overall I'll give it four out of ten. And uh, yeah, so I'll be back uh, probably tomorrow with with a raw review, and then obviously I'll be doing Impact maybe Friday or Saturday, and I'll obviously be back next Tuesday then for a random pay-per-view. So. So this was the Viper 4567 guys and I will talk to you guys tomorrow and enjoy the rest of your day. So take it easy.